let's get straight into it. The first paper I want to talk about is this class switching paper. So anti-vaxxers are sharing this class switch uh, paper around and acting like it's evidence that the vaccine is bad, essentially. So let me just talk about what this paper shows, and then I will talk about what the anti-vaxxers say. So this paper is talking about how antibodies will class switch over time, over multiple vaccinations or infections in order to switch to this IgG4 isotype. Now, just some background here. Antibodies are generally structured like this, this general Y shape. And the segments of the protein are as follows. You have the variable regions up at the top of the Y here. These are the regions that actually bind antigen. These are highly variable. They change a lot from antibody to antibody uh, because they have to recognize a lot of different antigens. Down here is called the FC region. This is the region that will generally elicit or exert some immune func functions. So if an antibody has bound its antigen, it's going to stick out and this region might be recognized by an immune cell to do some function. The functions are, uh, they, wi they vary widely. But anyway, you can think of the different IgG subclasses as they're generally going to bind similar antigens in this case, but the FC region might perform different functions. So when it comes to IgG4, its FC region doesn't really do much. Uh, it does do some things, but compared to other IgG subtypes, it doesn't do much. It mostly serves as a neutralizing antibody, so it's going to bind the antigen and neutralize it so that the antigen can't do anything. In this case, it's spike. The antigen is binding spike, or the antibody is binding spike and making it so that spike can't function properly. Again, this paper is just showing that over time, after multiple doses or infections, the authors are clear about that. They say um, that this response is further boosted by a third mRNA vaccination and or by breakthrough infections with SARS-CoV-2 variants of concern. You see a gradual shift in the antibody population to this IgG4 above what is normally observed. So they go through... Um, Further in the paper, they compare multiple exposures of, say, RSV uh, or other uh, respiratory viruses. Yeah, this section here um, to uh, SARS-CoV-2, and they say, "Oh, we don't see this phenomenon in other uh, in other respiratory infections, but we see it with SARS-CoV-2." It's a really interesting observation. It's a really interesting observation that IgG4 is preferred. And that's what we're observing. We're observing that the immune system over time with multiple exposures to the same antigen is maturing in a way that IgG4, that prioritizes IgG4 a little bit more than what we would expect. So what does this mean? Well, <laughs> it means that that's just what the immune system is picking. And if we look at what this means clinically, well, we see that a third dose or booster doses of vaccine remain really strong in preventing severe disease and outcomes of death by COVID. As you can see here by this data, the difference between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated is very large when it comes to death. When, I, when you go further out, the difference gets small because the unvaccinated are the unvaccinated and unexposed in other words, the people who have never been vaccinated and never gotten infected, those numbers are getting smaller and smaller. So the difference gets closer and closer, but we can see that there is still a distinct difference. So ultimately, what does this mean? This IgG subclass switching? It's just an interesting observation that we don't understand yet. And there is no clinical evidence to suggest that it is harmful or something we should be worried about. Okay? I don't know how anti-vaxxers 
cherry pick this paper out of all the papers out there. I'm really interested to see who picks this paper and then shoves it along the anti-vaccine pipeline because clearly these people are not actually reading the paper or they're just purposely picking parts of it that they know are going to go viral in the anti-vaccine community and that people in the anti-vaccine community aren't going to check them on. Ultimately, you don't need to worry about this observation. It's just an interesting observation. That's it.